Montone transistor clock radio purchased from eBay could be late 60s early 70s so let's have a look it's a medium wave long wave auto manual what other controls have we got we've got it's like some kind of oh it's a switch it must be the volume control and that's the tuner what else have we got on here there's a control on the side here that's for the alarm there's a couple of sockets on the side and on the back we have uh, something marked up wind and then there's a set time All right let's have a look have a circuit diagram might take a photograph of that and try and blow that up if we get down to a point at which we need to go through the circuit it says 9 volt down there, it's 2 band, long wave, medium wave and it's got 6 RF and 6 AF transistors and 1 diode right, let's put that aside initial look inside then it says PP6 9 volt ever ready battery or equivalent ok, first job of course is to photograph this in case any of these cables come off during the uh, pulling it around because these are very very fine and it'll be very difficult to try and work out where they where they went to I'm using a bench power supply because I know that that works properly and I can actually see the current being drawn rather than if I used a battery I wouldn't be able to see that Ooh. Well, it's coughed into life. All right, we're on long wave at the moment. Let's go over to the museum mode. Right? Just the tuning. Let's do the volume first. picking anything up on the medium wave at all sounds like it's adjusting frequency ok, it's a long wave something not quite right on this switch here ok, it's not picking any stations up so let's start the dismantling tuning mechanism right so the first thing I do is I'm going to check that all these connections all these cables are actually connected to where they should be and that nothing has fallen off what I'm going to do is I'm going to release this switch off the board as well and remove the entire thing if possible should have released the speaker now there we go so that is all the components out of the case ok what I really want to do now is to have a good inspection this board I'm going to give it an electrical clean and then I'm going to inspect every single joint on here I'm especially interested in cleaning out this switch contact here so this is an uh, electronic solvent cleaner ok, 
The other item that was really ropey was the actual potentiometer on this um, volume adjuster. So I really want to work in, work in there. This when you move all the grime as well as removing a lot of electrical contamination or potential problems. You get a chance to see the board properly as well. Just going to remove where we've got contamination between the tracks. So I'm going to uh, re-dab the solder in a number of places that I'm not very happy with and then I'll move on to looking at the individual components. The ones I have the biggest concern with, with this being 50 whatever years old, is the electrolytic capacitors. Uh, we've got quite a number of them here. Right, okay. Let's give it a little try and then we'll move on to looking at some of the components. Just reconnected the battery just to uh, have a little check. No major difference. Um, if I try adjusting some of these, it's having an effect on the circuit. Definitely detecting something. Circuit is definitely changing. Um, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to look at the, as I said, these capacitors. That's my first major concern. I think to do that properly, I'm going to desolder them from the board and check. Positive is up towards the uh, aerial. Okay, and the value of this component is supposedly 30 microfarad. Positive leg is that one. Negative is this one, and it should be 30 microfarads. Okay, it should be 30, and we've got 66 microfarads. So I'm going to replace that one straight up. Okay, I've got a modern day equivalent. This is rated 33 microfarad, 16 volt. Um, let's just put the test meter on it, just to show how this should work. Should be 33, we've got 36.7. So that's not bad. So I'm going to solder that one in. Right, to remove the next capacitor to check. All right, it's supposed to be 10 microfarad and we've got 23 microfarad. So we're going to think near 10 microfarad, I have. Replace this as well. Right, we have these very large capacitors here and here. Remove that one first. Okay, this 100 microfarad capacitor is reading 148. And a replacement modern one. 100 microfarad. 103.5 so I'm going to change that one as well <coughs> and the last one on desoldering this the actual pin is rotating in the component which is not a good sign the writing is upwards which is the positive that's 100 microfarad and this component not be tested it's pulled out there completely it's actually burnt 
So that component was burnt out. Getting closer to a possible solution. Okay, so we've now replaced the capacitors there, and there, and there, and there. Okay, so the capacitors have been changed, four capacitors. Connect the battery up now and give it a try, see what happens. Something's happening. Oh, some music. Try tuning it a little bit. Fantastic. I'm going to try and tune these a little bit, see what happens. These are the long way ones. I'm not sure if I'm going to get any signal in here with this long wave. It's something very faint there. Well, success! Excellent! So just by changing those capacitors, having a little bit of a retune on some of this circuitry, um, we're picking up channels on both the long wave and the medium wave. So what I'm going to do now, I seem to be quite happy with that, because we've got quite a poor signal where we are recording this. I'm going to put this back together again now, and hopefully the jobs are good. Un. So there we have it, we have a completed clock radio, back to working condition. I hope you found this video interesting and see you again next time.